Uh, can I bring the committee to order, please? Thank you. Uh, a warm welcome to those attending and to our viewers watching us live on the Council YouTube channel, Hiddingdon, London. My name is Councillor Higgins, and I'm the chairman of this meeting. Uh, details of business to be considered today are shown on the agenda and copies, copies which are accessible in the room and under the live broadcast. For those present in the room and intending to speak, please note that you are, will be filmed and any statements you make will be recorded and made public. A reminder to anybody speaking today that your voice will only be audible when the microphone is switched on. Fire alarms. We're not expecting any fire alarm uh, drills, so if the alarm does go off, please just follow officers out of the building. Uh, those mobile and tablet devices, councillors present on the table and officers will have computers and that looking at agendas, but if you have your mobile phone, can you please make sure it's switched off or turned to silent? I would like to introduce the committee and officers, uh, Councillor Steve Tuckwell, my Vice Chairman, Councillor Fire Jubadar, Councillor Hector Gohill, Councillor Raj Sansapuri, Councillor Jandit Singh, and Councillor Tony Gill. Welcome, I know you're substituting, but we'll get to that bit in a minute. Officers present today is the Planning Service Manager, Ross Johnson, Planning Team Leader, Kate Crosby, Principal Planning Officer, Hayden Richards, and Alan Tilly is our Transport and Planning Development Manager, Glenn Egan is our Legal Advisor, uh, Ryan D Dell is Democrat Assist Office, welcome, this is your first committee in charge, so look forward to that. And Steve Clark is sitting in the corner somewhere, just making sure we, we do everything properly. Now, we're going to go to, uh, first, for apologies for absence, Ryan. Yes, we have apologies from Councillor Mann with Councillor Gill substituting. Welcome, and thank you. Um, declaration of interest and access to coming for this meeting. Anyone? No? No me. Uh, <clears throat> do we agree the minutes of the last meeting? Do they agree? Matters, uh, matters notified in advance or urgent. Item 8 has been withdrawn, so that thing, and to confirm that everything is in public and is all in part one, there's no private reports. Before I move on to the agenda, I just uh, sort of like, uh, as a council, we tried to improve our committees and how they're doing. So what we've done is we've uh, got these lovely TVs here now, as you can see. They're LED TVs and they're for our playing presentation rather than our ceiling projectors. Uh, this will help modernise the way we do things in the meeting and provide greater imagery clarification for all those around the ta table. We've often had lasers pointed at people's heads and then they took someone's eye out once too. But anyway, we'll be going past that. So this is a small step towards democratic innovation. Um, I welcome any feedback about using them after the meeting as, as this is essentially a live test. Uh, also, this is something that I wanted to put in here. This, this is also, these TVs have previously used in other parts of the council, so they're not brand new for this committee. They're, they've been around for a bit. So we're going to have a go at it, and uh, if committee members can give me some feedback afterwards, that'd be even better. But uh, anyway, so we're going to go straight away into the first item, which is item six, which is 18 Highfield Road, Northwood. Um, okay. Great, thank you, Chairman. So the first item on tonight's agenda is a householder planning application. It's for extensions to a dwelling in old, the old Northwood area of special local character. So the proposal involves converting the garage to a habitable use, construct a part single, part two storey rear and side extensions, construct two side dormers and a front porch. Um, this application is part retrospective. Importantly, planning permission has previously been granted for an almost identical proposal. And what has been constructed hasn't been implemented fully in accordance with the approved drawings. So the key differences are the height of the side and rear extensions. Um, there's also some design changes to the window in a dormer and the depth of a dormer as well as the color of the fenestration. So because this has been built out, I thought it would be most useful to look at some site photos. So if we start with some photos here. So this is a bird's eye view of the street. Um, you can see the house there. This is the street scene context pre-development. So the application site is this one in the middle here. So you can see here that the ground is sunken in from each dwelling to either side of it. So when you've read through the report, um, this dwelling here is known as Windrush, 
and this one here is number 20. Uh, this is the application site again down here, pre the extensions. And this is, oops, sorry, just go back here. Uh, there's an example down the street here of a dwelling that's done something similar with the fenestration. It's got the black fenestration there. And this is a long view looking back down into the street with the application site in here. So if we just go to the next slide here, this is the application site. And as you can see, they've converted the garage here. They've done a dormer, roof dormer here, the side extension here. So with, I'll go through the plans after this, but essentially the height of this has been raised. Um, it should, on the previously approved plans, it generally aligned with the ridge here. So there's a parapet wall that's been put in here and you can see a little bit of the back of the rear element of the extension that's also been raised. But as you can see here, um, it fits in with other dwellings on the street. Another image here. Um, another view closer up. Um, this image here just shows how the front elevation generally aligns with the neighbouring one. Okay, this is just a bit of a mid view, so you can see the site here and how it fits in with the other dwellings. And this is the dormer that faces Windrush. And if we go to the back of the property, this is the other element that's also increased in height. This is a single story rear extension, and um, I think it's increased from, I think, three metres from the ground level, and it's gone up to 3.6. So you can see it here in relation to the neighbouring property. Okay, so if we just go back to the drawings. Okay, just to go through, so if we compare the site layout to what was, the one on the right is the one that was approved, and the one on the left is what's currently proposed. So we can see the footprint of the extensions are generally the same, here and here. And the difference on the site layout is the front, the, what's being proposed in the front garden. So they are proposing, the applicant is proposing to install a dropped curb, which they currently don't have. There will be parking for two cars on site, and they'll be installing some uh, soft landscaping in the front as well. Okay, just can, this is another comparison of the ground floor. As you can see, the depths and the dimensions, the ground floor dimensions of the extensions are the same as the height that's changed. Okay. First floor comparison here, you can see um, one slight difference is the dormer. I can get this right. Is the dormer here is slightly deeper. The dormer on the right hand side facing Windrush. Okay. And this is just the comparison of the one again, the one on the right is the approval and the one on the left is the scheme that's been built out. As you can see, it is slightly higher. There we go. It's slightly higher here on the parapet. If we compare the side elevations as well, um, the previous approval, um, the height was the same all the way around. Here we can see it has slightly raised, which we saw on the photos to the rear of the property. Okay, and there's just a, an additional image showing it um, from the street scene. Um, it's set a little bit below the street level. Okay, so officers have assessed the proposal, um, carried out a site visit. Um, actually, sorry, if we just go back to the site with the photo, this one here. So since officers carried out a site visit, we have become, we have been made aware that the patio has been, has since been constructed. We've seen photos of it and we are confident that um, there would be no overlooking issues subject to condition three which is included in the recommendation that just requires um, details confirming the heights of the patio in relation to the existing boundary treatment. Um, that is in the recommendation as a pre-commencement condition. Um, since it has already commenced, we just propose to change the time triggers so that following the grant of planning permission, the details are submitted within one month and implementation um, within two months. 
um, officers have assessed the proposal. We consider that the, the differences between the previous permission and what's currently proposed um, w would have would not cause harm to their area of special local character or have an impact on neighbouring amenity. Um, and we recommend approval. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, do we do have a petitioner here? No. Okay, do we have the agent, Shelley Singh? Would you like to come to the table? Okay, we, um, we have a traffic light system. You get green to four minutes, amber will be one, and when it comes to red, it, I will stop you. And please don't think I'm being rude, but that's the way it is. Um, so as soon as you press the microphone, we'll put the timer on. Just in front of you. That's that. That button there. Thank you. Sorry, Miss. I think your microphone's not on. There you go. Is it on now? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Good evening, Chairman, Councillors. I'm Shelley Singh. My husband and I own the property at 18 Highfield Road, where we live with our two young children, aged nine and two years old. The planning officer's report addresses all the points in line with the national and local policies. We are fully in agreement to all the recommendations and decisions made. My only purpose in coming here today is to reiterate our intentions in working according to the rules and guidelines of the planning department. We have worked with the planning officers over the past several months and will continue to do so. The main topic of discussion is the height of the rear extension wall. I want to make two points. Firstly, our property sits on considerably lower grounds compared to the properties on either side. The grounds are also sloping backwards, so the effect of any rear extension is very much reduced on the neighboring properties on either side. Secondly, I will note that the rear extension is of normal standard height. There's nothing out of the ordinary. There was a mistake made by our architect, which we have corrected, and I will give you a brief context of it. During the first planning application process in November 2020, the architect was asked to change the normal fascia and gutter finish on the rear extension and change it to brick on edge coping detail. This change means that the height of the wall needs to increase slightly to accommodate the parapet wall required to make the brick on edge detail. He changed the plans to show the brick on edge but did not adjust the height that is needed to accommodate the brick on edge parapet wall. The plans got approved as such. As lay people, we only realized this at the time of build when the builder pointed it out. We corrected this in the subsequent planning application of January 2022, which you are now considering. That is all there is to the rear extension discussion. Regarding other points raised, I can assure you that we chose all the materials with a lot of consideration to the local area to maintain the character of the wider area in keeping with the street scene. The bricks used in extension closely match the pattern and color of bricks used in the original building. The works carried out in the garden to replace the failing retaining walls, which posed a health and safety issue for my family. This work was under the provisions of permitted development and the materials used are sympathetic. I want to assure the respected committee that these works are purely to create a better living accommodation for our family and especially for our young children. My husband and I are working professionals and we need working space to be able to work from home. We have no intention to create an annex, which I understand would be subject to a separate planning application. I will close by saying once again that we have strived really hard to comply with all the rules and guidance in building our family home. Throughout this process, we did pre-planning application, planning application based on those guidelines, building regulation, and several consultations with the planning department over emails. All this to ensure that we were following the rules and guidelines. 
I have no doubt that the committee will give this a fair consideration. I thank you for listening and for giving your valuable time. Thank you very much. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, Councillor Tuckwell. Thank you, and thank you for taking us through um, your, your application this evening. I've got one question which is based on something that the, the officers made earlier on, and it's in relation to the raised patio. Um, I understand you had a condition that said you would supply details of that, but you've already started to construct it. Could you just help us understand why that would be the case? Of course. Um, as you can see from the photos, the patio was left as it was under the build um, for a long time. The application has taken long. I have two young children. I could not leave it like that. It was unsafe, so we went ahead and got it built. But we are very happy to take the recommendation of the committee and um, change it if needed as per the rules and regulations and the decisions made today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Thank you very much for your time. Take a seat. You can turn Thank the microphone you. off for me, please. Just turn the bu press oh. the button again. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, there is no ward councillor present, as I'm sitting on this side, so I can't really say anything, can I? So, um, I'll open it straight to the floor. Who's going to tell me? Councillor Gohill. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, um, can the uh, officers, just uh, just question for the officers, can you comment on the... Um, on the statement that the uh, applicant or the agent made um, about the sloping, the, the, about the sloping of the building and how it how its appearance would look, um, and and yeah, please thank you. Um, I think in terms of the appearance, the key slope is from the front. So when we saw here, uh, well, let me just get a if I can get a wider one. Okay, so this is pre-development, but you can see here that the property does, the property itself is sited lower than the ones on either side. So I think that's the key impact it has on the visual amenity of the street scene. So as you can see here, it is lower. It doesn't, even though the height of the site extension has been raised, it doesn't have a dominating impact on the appearance of the dwelling itself or the neighbouring ones or the street scene. In terms of um, what, when the applicant's mentioning the garden slopes back, so the garden is um, very lengthy. So if we show this image here, um, just get the mouse. it does actually slope going down to the back of the garden this way. But in terms of um, what we're considering today, the single storey extension, it is it is slightly lower, as you can see on the how they've built it, slightly up. But pretty much what you're seeing is that the ground is level there before it starts cutting down. It doesn't impact um, what we're considering today in terms of the extensions to the house itself. Councillor Tuckle. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, OK, I, I've got really mixed views on this application. Um, I can see from, from that picture that it it works for the street scene, I think. It, it does work um, and it's not out of out of sync with the properties either side. Where I, and, and, and this picture and a couple of others are really helpful because what I had a real severe reservation about was the difference in height. And if this committee thinks back a few meetings, we actually refused an application on a, on a similar um, issue with height. Um, as well. So I think if it wasn't for the sloping nature of where the property sits, then I would have no hesitation in saying it should be refused. But I think that, that the pictures do do help us with that. But I also think that retrospective planning applications, part retrospective planning applications, always send a, a sort of chill down committee spine because it you know, something we don't we don't actually relish, although we'll give them the same determination as a, as a fresh application. Um, the other thing I just wanted to test with officers here is if we can go back to the sort of close-up picture of this, the extension. Now that that, that that's probably that that will do. There was a couple of other pictures that are a bit closer. The the extension that's been built there, I can see a significant difference between the host. There you go. Significant difference between the host dwelling and the extension. I'd just be keen to hear from officers their view on that, because you know whether or not that's going to 
whether over time and sort of how long that is likely to take because that, that's quite a difference in, in image that I can see there. So I was just interested to see what officers' view on that was. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I, I accept what you're saying. There is clearly a difference. I suppose my own view was that it's not always possible to get a complete brick match. And on balance, I felt that with the sort of step back and the step down in terms of the levels, I didn't think it would be unduly prominent. So on balance, I felt that it was acceptable. Um, I think if you disagreed with that, um, there would be potential option for a condition to perhaps ask for some brick tinting, but that would be quite expensive. So I think you'd have to sort of think, you know, how much do you felt that that was necessary? If I can come back, Chairman. Yeah, um, again, we've been sat here before and talked about brick tinting, um, and it, we know it's expensive. And the last thing I'd want to do is add unnecessary cost to um, to, to the applicant. Um, just, just, you know, how long will it take for that to sort of settle in, do we, do we sort of think? Because it is quite a difference. But if it's going to be like a year or two, then that might be something we could, we could work with. And so it's probably difficult to give you a precise answer if I'm totally honest. It will depend on the sort of weather conditions and, you know, that sort of thing. And um, I think as well it probably helps when the mortar starts to weather over time as well. But I wouldn't like to give you an estimate on time because I wouldn't necessarily be confident it would be accurate. Thank you. I'd like to come back on that, actually. It's a good point there. I mean, to be honest, it's, it's just a mixture of the bricks, isn't it? I mean, there's no... On the original building, there is some black bricks in there. And on the extension, there isn't. And I think that is what the problem is. It's because they're totally different uh, colour. That, you know, I'm mindful, to, you know, I know it's an expense, but there again, this is, this is the whole problem that we have with retrospective applications. If they come in at a normal time and we, we determine, we would say that there would be, have to be a match on this. So, I'm, you know, I know, I know it's an extra expense, but, you know, if you're going to roll the dice that way, then maybe the committee should consider whether that the brick tinting should be just done on the front. I don't, I don't think it's so much at the back, but on the front it does look tends to look different. And my other opinion is is, is that the question I want to ask officers is the do the door on there is that in keeping with the conservation area, the front door? Because that doesn't look like it's it looks very modern. I know it's going to be covered with a porch at a later date, but I'm just considered whether that is in keeping in the area. Um, I suppose it comes down to sort of um, interpretation and your personal perspective. Personally, I think that it's okay and that it matches in with the windows, and so I don't think it's harmful. And again, this site is helped, as we've seen, by the drop in levels. And don't forget, there would be the boundary wall on the front, which will also help to screen. Plus, there's a porch, um, which we're considering as part of this application, which again would take away the prominence of the door. Thank you. And then also, there's a condition here for 25% of the front to be garden which we will want to to be implemented that's a condition okay anybody else councillor gohill thank you chairman um so uh, just i'm going to just briefly weigh in on the on the brick on the brick situation just before i move on to my actual what my actual concern was i think on balance i think the bricks are okay only because the, and, and, and I say this as an opinion rather than a, a policy statement, only because of the the windows that have been changed to a darker colour. Um, that's my interpretation of it. If it was kept as um, if it was kept as what it was before, if it was brighter, it would be far more obvious. But obviously, every other councillors may have a different opinion. But my opinion on that is just the, that the darker the darker shade of the windows makes it seem kind of okay especially from a from a distance it, i don't think you'd be able to tell so if you have the pictures of the two two of them next to each other it's quite difficult to tell it's only when you're like really up close um but my i think i think my kind of struggle with my initial struggle with this was that and and was that it clearly goes against policy dmhd1 and you know we were told we were told by the agent as well that um I'm told by the agent as well that initially they wanted that was the plan that they wanted to put in place as well, and I understand the reasons with the sloping and the and the the guttering and and whatnot why they wanted to, but we we do have we do have policies there for um, for reasons. So actually, uh, it w it would be really useful if we can get some um, 
some uh, information on if this were to go a different direction than what officers recommended, what would um what would our what would our kind of options be at that point? Ros, that would be your yeah, coming on that one. Yeah, I think it reminds me of some of the other cases that we've discussed in the previous months. Yeah, so my view is that um, it's possible to have a technical breach on one or two of the criteria in the policy, um, but overall, when you have to you have to read it in the round. Um, and my view is that when you look at this one in the round, it does comply with the um, objectives of those policies. So, I mean, it obviously depends on your opinion, but I think it's acceptable in the street scene. It doesn't harm neighbouring amenities. So whilst there's a technical breach in terms of um, the height in relation to what the policy says, um, overall it complies with the development plan. And um, so that's my view on it. I feel that if we did refuse this, I think we'd lose the appeal. Yeah, can go Thank you, Chairman. Um, on after hearing what the officers had to say and after hearing what the agents have to say, um, I think I'd like to go ahead and propose officers' recommendation on this. But I will say that this isn't a typical response. If there's you know if there's people watching this meeting on YouTube or, or whatnot, this isn't a typical response of the council that we just let these things go. And you know as you uh, officers know that we we look at cases very um, we look at cases on case by case by case basis and. We're, we're not going to consistently let policy breaches um, we're not going to consistently let policy breaches um, happen. But actually, having read this and having seen the the images, the the applicant has been quite clever about the way that they've done the house. Um, you know, using using thinner materials such as aluminium um, on the side dormers, so it's not uh, so it's not obtrusive. Um, you know, keeping as much as they can brick colour the same and. Um, and I think actually the, the reasons for the reasons for why they needed that extension are in you know on balance quite quite valid. Um, so I'm happy to go ahead and propose officers' recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Garhill. Councillor Tuckwell. Oh, Councillor Sim. Sorry, Councillor Tuckwell. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, as I said earlier on, I had very mixed uh, views on this. Um, I, I don't think we need to go to the to the points of. of Brick bleaching, and now I've listened to what's been said, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with that. Although it was good to think to have that debate, um, I'm, I'm happy to second. Um, but I think I think this application on, on is lucky to get through, if I might say so. So um, it will get through on its merits, and that's that's well done. But I'm, I'm happy to, to second that, depending on where the vote goes on it next. Thank you. Thank you. I think that is the, the concern with retrospectives. So, and the public has to realise that this committee can actually make them take it down. So, you know, on balance, this one's got got away with it, um, and I'm glad to hear that. So, can I have a show of hands? Did you want to say something, Councillor, or are you just going to second? Thank you, Chair. Uh, anyway, uh, all my other colleagues did uh, raise the issues, but my concern was high actually. If it, they can reduce, then fine, but otherwise, um, I support the house recommendation. Thank you. And the other thing, I think the unfortunate thing is, is that we've got these lovely TVs, so the images are so crisp and clear, we can actually notice if it was on, if it was on the projectors, we probably wouldn't notice the difference in the brickwork. But anyway, that is how I've had a proposal and seconded. Can I have a show of hands, those in favour of the officer's recommendation? So that is passed. Thank you. We now go on to item seven, which is the rice stick telephone exchange. Um, that's Katie, that's you again. Thank you, Chairman. So this application is a telecoms application. It's to install a new end replacement antenna on an existing stub pole, which is on the rooftop of the rice slip telephone exchange, as well as um, cabinets and ancillary apparatus. So the reason for the equipment is to facilitate new 5G coverage and to improve 2G, 3G and 4G service. The site is located within the rice slip village conservation area. Um, so, the, so that we can have a look at the visual impact, the applicant has helpfully prepared a series of photo montages from 12 viewpoints. So if I just, let me just skip through to them. Okay, so this is the site here. You can see the building aligned in red. I guess importantly from viewpoints, the key glimpses of the um, telecoms equipment is between buildings, essentially. So it's where the um, viewpoints are going to be focused from. So this is where the views are taken. 
So if we go through this, um, this is it currently. And if you keep an eye on the stub here. Okay, sorry. The stub here, this is the one that will change. So this is current and this is it proposed. As you can see, um, the antenna is being replaced on the rooftop. Um, Viewpoint 2, same thing there, gets a, a little bit larger antenna. There. Sorry, it's here. If I just, this one here, no change because you can't see the rooftop from this one. Um, same with this one. Actually, no, sorry, there it is there. For after, there you can see the scale of what's being proposed. So currently and with the antenna, there, no change from that one. And view 10, 11, and the final view next to the harvester, you can see it there in the um, background. Okay, so officers have assessed the proposal and in terms of its visual impact, or well, in terms of its impact on the conservation area, it's considered that there will be less than substantial harm, because there would be harm because we are putting something in the conservation area, but that it would be outweighed by the public benefits brought through improved connectivity for businesses and residents. Um, in terms of the siting, it is consistent with the MPPF, which encourages the use of existing masts and buildings to keep um, installation sites to a minimum. Um, one comment that neighbours, that residents raised that isn't a planning matter, but we have followed up with the agent, is the impact on TV frequency. So the agent has confirmed that 5G operates on a completely different frequency than TV, so there, shouldn't, so there is no interference issues. Um, in terms of noise, that was also something that residents raised. Um, our noise officer has assessed it and subject to a condition which would included condition three, um, it won't have any impact on neighbouring amenity. So officers recommend that the application is approved. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Katie. Um, right, uh, petition organiser Mike Briscombe is not attending. Would you like to speak? Um, I'm happy to. I, I believe that um, Council Council is going to have a... Um, yeah, we've got two councillors representing. Um, should they have that? I'm happy to meet them. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm planning on saying <coughs> very much. Okay. You're, you're, you're with politicians. We always like to talk, so you're more than welcome. Okay. Right, my name is Maria Danielle, and up until uh, 2001, I lived at Two King Edwards Road with my parents and my sister. Um, since then, I don't live there. I live very nearby, down the road, and um, I've been involved on and off with these types of applications, these planning applications, since 1998, when they first started appearing up on the building behind my parents' garden. Um, I guess my, I, I really just have a a general observation because as councillors all the committee members have already said you've gone through some of the points on the objections that Mike sent first in June or May when the original application of these particular amendments were done and then obviously more recently before Christmas um, so it'd be futile really going through those but and that really goes towards my general observation that in all of these years what we haven't really had is the satisfaction of knowing well have these have our concerns been considered let alone addressed um, because it, it it doesn't appear that anything's ever changing it just keeps getting added to um, so I'm, I'm not really sure what else I can add really um, it was just a general observation to see whether anything will actually change or whether it will just keep being added to and added to over the years because the, that's the technology when that building wasn't specifically for that sort of thing and it's very visible from my parents home always has been um, they endeavoured themselves and the neighbours to grow trees to be able to cover at least visually to not be able to see them but um, BT actually made them chop them down a few years ago saying that they compromise the wall that backs that 
is the adjoining wall that backs onto the BT building, basically. From the, and I don't believe that in my mum's lifetime she's going to be able to grow trees long enough or high enough to be able to cover them again. So um, that, that's really all I want to say. I, I could go into the technicalities here and all the responses, which I think Mike has done very, very thoroughly. Um, so I don't really have anything else to add. So I will leave it at that. Thank you very much. All right. Um, you have does anybody want to ask questions? Yes, Councillor Tuckwell. Thank you for taking us through that. Your, your mm. thoughts. Um, I just wonder if you could let myself and the committee know what mm. kind of advance notice or consultation you've had in relation to this application. Uh, for this particular one, which was an amendment to the one that was uh, submitted um, around May time, um, we were told a few days before Christmas about it. Um, not the best time for us to then put together an answer, but we felt at the time we were confident that because there were no material changes to what had been proposed in May, we could respond very similarly to what we had done in June. So on this particular one, it was about a week or 10 days, I think, before the deadline of the 27th, something along those lines. So it was all over the Christmas period. Okay. Thank you very that, much. Okay. I don't know. Anybody else? No, thank you. Nope. All right, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, I don't see the agent here, Sam Wismayer. No. Nope. Okay, so we go down to to the councillors. I know we have Councillor Smallwood. If you'd like to come to the table before we read out Councillor Hawthorne's, I think. Well, thank you, Chair and Committee, and a very happy Valentine's Day to you all. Um, this application doesn't fill me with a lot of love, though. Um, it disappoints me that the agent couldn't uh, originally even put the right scheme in uh, at the very beginning. Uh, it worries me that if you can't put the right scheme in, how possibly could we trust them to build a mast in the way uh, that they're saying? And whilst I recognise it's not a planning provision, I think it's a little shocking and incredibly disrespectful at the com almost complete lack of consultation or the timing of the consultation um, that the applicant has carried out with local residents. And I'd hope that the planning department um, would feed that back to them. Um, and I wouldn't refer to the planning, uh, this, this applicant as helpful. Uh, the photos may look great, but they've not been very helpful to me and never even contacted me um, as a ward councillor. I also think the committee needs to raise concerns about the visual impact that it will have. Um, I don't believe that there's a screening effect that they lay out in the heritage statement 5.5 uh, um, and anybody, well, you know, I don't even need a site visit. I think you can just, you can just see that. And I think my concern is that um, when we look at policy uh, DMHB 21 on telecommunications, it talks about um, continuing to, to put things up. W whilst this might be a little bit, you know, we can't say in a conservation area that, okay, this is going to have minor impact, this is going to be a small amount of impact, if it's lots of little bits. And you only have to look through all the previous planning applications that they've been here. Little bit here, little bit there, little bit here, little bit there. And you can't just keep adding a little bit and saying it has a small impact and using that as your excuse or your way of getting around it. I don't think that is fair. I don't think that is right. And if you do that, you're just going to build up in our conservation areas, in our places of natural beauty. And I do have, you know, it, it actually pains me to almost be against putting up 5G. As somebody who's never off their phone and would love the 5G, uh, I'd great. But I have not seen a single, a single, a single chart or a thing where the applicant has given alternative sites. And I believe that is a, uh, in, in under DMBH4, under conservation areas, our policy, that is something that they, they should have done. And that's incredibly disappointing. Um, and there doesn't seem to be much in, uh, uh, also technology is moving on and I'd love to hear from the applicant about how they could use modern technology to potentially produce um, Fiji 5G all in all this is a terribly disappointing uh, application I hope that the committee uh, if it doesn't refuse it will write uh, with its disappointment in the way it has treated my residents um, uh, but I do hope that you will refuse it on this occasion thank you very much Chairman thank you Councillor well, does anyone have any questions oh it's off Right. Sorry. Turning our back on the committee is, I don't know, that's a bad sign. Of course, answer any questions from anybody. Does any councillor wish to ask him a question? No. So you Obviously agree there. with everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Councillor Smallwood. Sorry, calling you Peter. I'll get told off later for that. Um, okay, so I'm going to re get the statement from Councillor Cawthorne, and uh, then we'll, I'll open it to the floor. Okay? Over to you, Ryan. Thank you. I am addressing these comments to the planning committee more in hope than expectation, given the officer recommendation that this planning application be approved. 
However, with due respect to the case officer, it is my contention that the assessment of where the overall planning balance lies, which is a subjective even for town and planning for town and country planning professionals, is wide of the mark. The officer report itself concedes that there will be an impact on the conservation area. I point out that there is already an impact from the existing stub pole, which will be worsened in the event of the application being approved, with even greater visual impacts. I don't agree that the said planning benefits outweigh the harm when one considers that there has been a call for alternative suitable sites and Hillingdon is, as I understand it, very willing to engage with developers over this. There are public concerns about health impacts, although I realise the science behind this has not yet come to a satisfactory conclusion. Where the report says the applicant asserts the proposals comply with ICNIRP guidelines, it would be surprising if they said anything else, and I would ask whether there is any requirement for independent verification of this claim. Throughout, as the report indicates, there has been a lack of engagement over this application and alternative sites, as well as incomplete documents. Whilst TV, TV interference may not itself be a planning consideration, a good developer would have picked this up as part of proper engagement and sought to address it to engender some goodwill. I thank committee members for listening and will leave them to their deliberations. Thank you, Ryan. Right, so before I open to the floor, and I know, of course, I saw you, Councillor Tudor, you, you'll be first, so I promise. I just want to give um, the officers some feedback about how we look at telegraph poles, and so residents can actually see what, what we actually do do. So over to you, Ross. Sorry to put you in it. But Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I've made a few notes people were talking, so I'll just work through and address the points that I've jotted down. So firstly, just wanted to touch on the consultation. Um, I think, you know, we'd all agree that we would hope that the developers would do public consultation. Um, where they don't we, don't, we don't have a sustainable reason to refuse an application, but what we do do is make sure that we do our own consultation properly in accordance with the regulations, so that's what we've done on this application. Um, and then I just wanted to draw attention to paragraph 115 in the MPPF. So there's been a lot of discussion about um, there's a lack of evidence as part of this application that they've considered alternative sites. Um, I think, yes, we'd agree that there is a lack of evidence in this case, and that is a weakness as part of this application, but paragraph 115, um, I'll read it out. So the number of radio and electronic communication masts and the sites for such installation should be kept to a minimum consistent with the needs of consumers, the efficient operation of the network and providing reasonable capacity for future expansion, use of existing masts buildings and other structures for new electronic communications capability, including wireless, should be encouraged. So I think that's really important. So what we're trying to um, prevent is the pro proliferation of sites. This does make use of an existing site, and really it comes down to looking at that additional impact and whether that, that um, yes, there is some harm, as we've acknowledged, whether that, in your mind, it's outweighed by the public benefit. And I, I completely take on board the point that was made about sort of chipping away incrementally at the conservation area. And yes, I agree that that is concerning. But what we have to do is look at the application that we have before us and we have to um, wait up on its own merits. And that's, that's what we have to do. So officers feel that the public benefits do outweigh the harm in this case. Uh, Ross, can I ask you a question? Um, how many we do refuse these, don't we? I mean, it's not, we don't sort of can't blanch let everybody have them, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I don't have the figures to hand, but we do refuse quite a number of these um, telecommunications um, applications. There was actually another point that I jotted down, which I forgot um, a moment ago. I just wanted to come back on the health point. There really is nowhere for us to go in terms of um, having concerns about health. It's tried and tested through appeals. If it complies with the certificate that was mentioned, um, we don't have anywhere to go with that concern. Thank you, Ros. And I will make, as the chairman, I will write to them. My, well, my committee will write. I won't personally do it, but they'll write to them and saying about how they behave very badly and they should do a lot better than they do in the future. Okay, so I'll open to the, to the committee, Councillor Gohill, Councillor Gill. Sorry, Councillor Tubidar and Councillor Gill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I wanted to basically ask the officers to address the concerns raised by the ward councillor and the petitioner. 
and uh, whilst uh, you have uh, addressed uh, some of these concerns, you didn't mention anything about the impact on the visual immunity of the neighboring properties which uh, the petitioner raised as, as, uh, as a real concern. Also, we do actually here see and say that there is harm in, 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 in having uh, these uh, new antennas being put in to the, to the conservation area. But we say, well, that outweighs the benefits. I haven't seen any tangible benefits being described in this particular case. How do we measure the benefits? Can, can, you, can you explain to us what these benefits are, please? I will put that over to you, Ros. Thank you, Chairman. So it wouldn't be sort of a mathematical calculation um, weighing it up in that um, respect, but it is important and it's acknowledged that um, we need to advance to 5G. So there is a need um, that's kind of well understood, and this will obviously support that. Okay. Do you would like to come back, Council Chairman? Oh, Mr. Chairman, I would like uh, the officers to explain the impact, the visual amenity of the neighbouring uh, residents. What do we do with that? Yeah, we just also come back and answer that. Yeah, I was just um, referring to the report. So we do address this um, briefly in um, section 7.08. Essentially, um, it, it will affect the view from the property. So a view in itself isn't a material planning consideration. We can consider outlook, and clearly it will be there in the outlook. But we felt as officers that given the distance, it wouldn't be an unduly detrimental effect that would warrant the refusal of this application. Okay. Councillor Gill. Thank you, Chair. Just a question regarding the consultation. What was the outcome of it, and what was the general uh, acceptance or general objection to the uh, idea? Yeah, one moment, Councillor. I'm just turning to the section of the report. So um, in your report, section number six, um, we have a summary um, of our public consultation results. So there was a petition submitted with 23 signatures, and that was um, against the proposal. Um, just having a look. don't see any individual um, comments submitted, so just the petition. Just the petition. Okay. Piece to you as well, Councillor Tuckwell. Well, it's Valentine's night, isn't it? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I don't like this scheme, um, but it's already there. The harm is already is already sat there, and, and, and we're having to the good folk of Rice here are having to look at look at um, this this mosque. It's already there. I think that the, the conundrum we've got is that conservation area or not, people in conservation areas still want 5G connectivity. And I hear the points around alternative sites, but if, if this was somewhere else, it would probably be a, a 20 metre monopole on Rysip High Street with a, with a dozen cabinets sat around it. So, you know, it's already there. It's, it's already causing harm. The benefits are um, outlined in the report around um, the 5G connectivity, which is which is where society is going. I'd rather not have it there, and I think if this was a fresh application, you know, with a with a flat roof, I'd, I'd be happy to refuse it. Um, but I think the fact that it's there, and the fact that it is already um, visual to to, to Rysett residents, um, and the material sort of difference in terms of um, additional equipment. I think the councillor saw a really good point, and there does come a tipping point at some point, and I don't know where that is, um, and I don't think this committee can determine that, but there has to be a, a point, because you know, otherwise in, in a couple of years that whole roof is going to be full of radar equipment, and we can't allow that to happen. But for this particular application, um, I, I think the harm's already there, and I think that the, 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 the differences that are being made there is, is something that I think we'd like to refuse, um, but we can't because I think if this goes for appeal, it would probably be seen as an unreasonable refusal and we would be stuck with costs as well. So I'll be interested to see what officers' view on that is. Um, but you know, that's just my little monologue for this evening. That's an, a nice monologue. Um, 
Thank you. I'll ask officers if they come back on that. Yeah, I would certainly share your view. I think we'd lose the appeal and we could probably make a case, potentially avoid the cost, but it would be a risk, yeah. I think the other, the other risk for us, and, and I know that's not any help for the petitioners, is that, is that we actually, we're, we're probably one of the only authorities that really do sort of like reject them. And if we if we're not reasonable in what, what we don't we do reject, then you know it, it makes it difficult. So we we, we win quite a lot. So that's the thing is, and 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 hopefully, although I don't have a crystal ball, but I think technology will get. They further advance, and I think they get smaller rather than larger. So, and there's no other applicants at the mo applications at the moment for that rooftop anyway. So it's just that one. I know it looks like Trident has put his fork in the roof, but I'm afraid that uh, the best we can do. So I have a proposer and a Councillor Gohill. Sorry. Sir. Thank you, Chairman. Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, I'd like to second officer's recommendations on this. I think. Um, Yes, it's undesirable to have it on the same roof um, in addition to what's already there, but I think the the benefits of it um, can't be ignored and, and also, um, but also it, it's a sort of, um, what I'm looking for, it's comforting to hear that we have rejected these in the past and though this one, I, though I am supporting this one, it would, it, it wouldn't necessarily be the case with, with all of them, and um, it's comforting to hear that officers look into this from, from all angles. Okay. Um, Councillor Sabori, did you just want a second, or would you say something? I just want to say, because you have a lengthy discussion, yeah. <coughs> at the end of the day, as the officer said, even if we reject that, we are going to lose in the field, so we don't have any alternative. Thank you. And I can assure you that I will write to the applicant and Give a slap on the wrist. No, I know. No, we, we on balance we have been told that we would lose, and I, we don't usually take questions from the floor. I'll let you off because you're new. Um, but no, we th that's what was said. Okay. Um, right. So we've been posed and seconded. Can I have a show of hands those in favour of the application? So that's uh, unanimous. Right. Okay. So, uh, item 8 has been withdrawn, so, so we move on to item 9 where we have a, a seat switch. <laughs> Get yourself comfortable. Now I have to call you Kate instead of Hayden now, because you got the wrong thing. <laughs> anyway. Um, right, Hayden, you want to take us away on this one? Thank you, Chair. Can everyone hear me? Okay, perfect. So, um, good evening, everyone. Uh, just before we start, uh, item 9 obviously refers to 72 Harefield Road. Um, this application has been appealed on non-determination, so today we are deciding what we would have done with the application. We won't actually be deciding the application. Uh, the second point to make is, um, as per the addendum, refusal reason 4 um, has been removed from the recommendation because the issues regarding trees can be overcome by conditions. And the third thing to note is that a late request was made by the applicant to submit amended plans. However, due to the lateness of the request, it was denied. And uh, now I'll get into the presentation. So um, item nine obviously refers to 72 Harefield Road. Um, the application seeks planning permission to demolish an existing house and to replace it with a four-story building comprising nine flats. The application has been recommended for refusal. There has been two previous applications at the site for four-storey buildings, which have also been refused. Uh, one of them was also dismissed at appeal. Uh, now I'll run through the reasons for refusal. So um, outlined in red, we have the site itself. To the north of the site is 74 Harefield Road, and to the south of the site is 52 to 60 Harefield Road. Um, now move on to the constraints plan. Um, the site has no marked constraints. It's within a parking management area and to the east of the site is the area of special local character. Um, at present, there is a two-story family house that sits on the site. This is the house which is going to be demolished and replaced with the four-story building comprising the nine flats. Um, this is a floor layout or site plan for the site which shows the building itself in the bottom left corner and the street scene elevation. 
So um, in terms of refusal reasons, the first reason we'd be refusing the application is due to the bulk size, height, width and depth of the building. We think it's oversized, we think it's an overdevelopment of the site and we think it would be harmful to the character and appearance of the area. The second reason for a refusal is to do with the impact on neighbouring amenities. To the north of the site we've got 74 Harefield Road, which is, if I can get this mouse to work, Okay, so let's go with that. So to the north of the site is 74 Herfield Road. Um, at the moment, we've got a new access road proposed next to the habitable room windows and openings of number 74. Um, people coming and going from that access road in their cars or by foot are going to cause additional noise and disturbance to residents of that property, and we feel that would have an adverse impact on their amenities. Um, to the south of the site, you've got 56 to 60 Herfield Road. As you can see at the moment, there's a clear 45 degree line drawn on the plan and that line shows that the building would dissect a line drawn at 45 degrees and would therefore cause a loss of outlook and loss of light to the rear habitable room windows of 56 to 60 Airfield Road, um, causing, like I said, a loss of light and a loss of privacy to those um, occupiers. To the front of the site, there's a balcony proposed. The balcony would allow for views into the front elevation windows of 56 to 60 Harefield Road, causing a loss of privacy to its residents. Um, and also, if you were to view the building from the garden of the site, it would appear visually sort of obtrusive, quite overbearing because of its scale and size. So we'd also be recommending it for refusal on those grounds. The next reason, or third and final reason for refusal on this application is to do with the level of amenity which would be provided for future occupants of the building. So at the moment, at lower ground floor level, we've got um, flat two, which has bedroom two. Um, and within bedroom two is served by, I guess its only means of outlook is into a boundary fence wall, which means whoever is staying in that flat, uh, essentially uh, in that bedroom two would be looking directly into a wall and we don't think that's the kind of living accommodation we'd want to provide for any future resident. So that was um, one of the issues that we had with it. Additionally, at ground floor level within flats four and five, uh, bedroom one for both of those has two windows, a primary large window to the side um, of both of them, which would need to be obscure glazed to prevent any overlooking to neighboring houses. So if we're obscure glazing that window, then the sole means of outlook would be to the east of the site toward the garden for a really small window and that window itself would have limited views because of the flank wall of the building which runs adjacent to the window. So we also feel like the occupiers of those rooms, uh, bedroom one in both flats and four and five would have limited outlook. And uh, for those three reasons, we would be recommending this application for refusal. Uh, beyond that, I have got some additional slides if anyone would like to refer to the previous refusal um, and the dismissed appeal those schemes we have the slides for those further on and I'm just going to quickly show you the important photos of the site which I think sort of um, will enable you to visualize the adverse impacts that I've spoken about so this is the site itself 72 Harefield Road on the left hand side we've got 74 Harefield Road this is the rear of the site, so this is where the car parking would be. That's number 74 from a close distance. These are the habitable room openings at number 74, which we're concerned about once we've got this new access road and you've got cars coming and going. Um, it's obviously, like I said, going to be additional noise, additional disturbance. If cars are coming up that road in the night, then you've got the light pollution from the lights as well going into those windows. Um, when I spoke about the balcony earlier on, this is the front um, elevation of 56 to 60 Harefield Road on the uh, or your right hand side. These are the windows that we're concerned about having a loss of privacy due to the new balcony. 
and to the rear of the site. So this is the rear of 56 to 60. As you can see, there's dormers, there's uh, um, second floor or roof level, uh, first floor habitable room windows, and also ground floor. And we're concerned about those windows in terms of a loss of light and loss of outlook. So uh, those are the three reasons for recommending this application for refusal. And the four reasons are set out in the officer's delegated report or recommendation report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Hayden. That's well done. Very well done. It's your second one. You've done it really well. Lots of really good points there. I love the outlook bit and everything about amenities. It's really good. Um, I'm sure the committee are thoroughly pleased with that presentation. So, um, I have the petitioner here. Uh, forgive me if I pronounce your surname incorrectly. Susan, is it Lyal? Lyal. Lyal. Okay. Oh, close enough. Thank you. If you'd like to take a seat. And <laughs> there you go. Okay. Well, good evening, Mr. Chairman, councillors, and officers. I am Susan Liao, speaking in the role of lead petitioner, representing 50 petitioners who oppose the planning application of 72 Harefield Road. We are firstly very happy and very grateful for the recommendation of refusal by the Officer and Director of Planning. Thank you. All those who signed the petition opposing the development of 72 Heavy Roads are residents who have lived in the area for more than 10 years and some close to 40 years who have enjoyed living in this area where our visual amenities are not impaired by excessive size, intrusive, visually prominent, and overdevelopment of the area, and where our residential amenities have not been negatively impacted through noise, overlooking, overshadowing, air pollution, loss of daylight, loss of privacy, or dust. We therefore applaud London Borough of Hillingdon from the depths of our hearts for living by and carrying out your mission statement of putting our residents first. Putting our residents first. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will now also articulate the reasons put forward in our petition. Firstly, congestion and effect of traffic on Harefield Road. 72 Harefield Road is located on a very narrow stretch of the road in between three separate road junctions. It is already a congested and dangerous stretch of road with difficult sight lines with parking spaces on the road causing traffic to only be able to use one side of the road, therefore to create an entrance for more cars right in the middle of this location will add to the congestion and danger to road users and pedestrians. Secondly, Location of car park at the back of the site. This proposed car park sits next to the boundary of number two Cambridge Road, which means that the length of this property's garden will have to suffer from the inevitable pollution caused by all those cars on the other side of the fence. This will also affect all the other gardens in close proximity. And the location of the car park, right next to the proposed small garden space made available for the new occupants, means that the car park will sit in the middle of green space. We don't think the parking spaces as planned are sufficient for the many occupants that will live in the building, which will result in parking on the heavy road and the surrounding roads contributing further to the congestion in the area. Thirdly, overdevelopment of a very small site. The plans propose change from a space that was designed to be occupied by four, maybe five people in one house to a multi-occupancy building with potentially up to 30 people occupying the same space. And the location of this proposed block of flats is completely out of keeping with this part of Harefield Road and will erode the character of the area. 
and the destruction of a large garden to be replaced with a car park cannot be considered an environmentally friendly piece of planning. And lastly, the height of the property and the balconies, the impact on residents behind the property. You know, to make up for the lack of sufficient garden space, the proposal intends to create a number of balconies at the back, which will overlook the previous private gardens at the back of the property. These will now be overlooked and subject to whatever noise is emitted from those balconies. The building, given its significant height increase from the current family home, will also take away light from the numerous gardens at the back that it will now overshadow. So the petitioners are saying this is the wrong development for the wrong part of Heavy Road, and we, the petitioners, call on the rejection of the application. Thank you very, very much for your kind consideration for our petition. Thank you. Thank you. Well timed. Down to the last second. Well done. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions for the petitioner? No? Thank you very much. You may take a seat. Thank, Thank you. Uh, I don't see the applicant present. Uh, we do have a ward councillor. Councillor Bills, would you like to come to the table? You know you only have your three minutes. So. Uh, Thank you very much, Chairman and Councillors. Um, I think we just heard the emotion that this planning application has caused. This is a family home. It should be used as a family home, not a block of flats. It's a complete overdevelopment. As the, as the, as the um, petitioner just said, there's potentially up to be 30 people living on that site. And, you know, really and truthfully, it should be a family of four or five. That's what it was built for. That's what it should stay. The developers just keep whittling away, hoping that they're going to get their permission. I think the reasons that the, the petitioner just come up with are so clear. The loss of privacy, the loss of the amenity, the garden, the, the problem of going into Cambridge Road with the, with the pollution, the, the sighting of the car park, it will increase the pollution. Pollution. That, that should be another reason for the um, for the refusal. But we're grateful for the report that the officers have have written. The um, you know I think we should, I think the committee should send a strong message out. We keep getting these developments in Harefield Road. They keep coming back. They kept refused, rightly so. And people keep coming back for more and more, thinking they can trim away and trim away. And I think people have got to turn around and say enough is enough. This is the wrong, the wrong development for the wrong area. The one area which the, the petitioner said was also about the road access. It is a very dangerous part of the road there. It's a, sp it's a speed uh, tr trap down there. And it would, would cause additional problems with a, the with a housing development there. So thank you for the, the officers for the recommendation. And I, I urge you to support the officers' recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Bills. Does anybody have any questions for Councillor Bills? No? Thank you. You may take your seat. Right. So, um, who's going to take me away? Councillor Chubidar, Councillor Singh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. I, I, forgive me. You are first, but I've just remembered there is a written statement that uh, came in. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Ryan. A statement from Councillor Burrows. Um, dear Mr. Chairman, Unfortunately, I am unable to attend this evening's meeting to support the residents in their petition against this planning application. In my opinion, there is not much difference in this application to those already submitted and refused, including by the planning inspector. This is overdevelopment which will have a harmful effect on the neighbours and the street scene, including the provision of trees. It is very much out of character with anything on Harefield Road, and although they state parking will be provided, in my view there will not be enough for the number of dwellings proposed. I would therefore fully support the residents in this matter and request the committee uphold the refusal recommendation put forward by officers. Thank you. I do apologise for that committee. Uh, oversight on my part. So, Councillor Chibodon. Thank you, Mr Chairman. 
Um, I would like to uh, start by saying thank you to the petitioner, councillors which have uh, put their views across, the officers which have prepared a fantastic report. I also would like to add that, yes, it is true, the same application, four story, being refused, coming back, refused again, the appeal against it has been dismissed, and yet again we get more, more or less the same application coming back to us. And uh, I, I know that the public are free to make as many applications as possible, but it is really leaves a s sore taste in, in, in my opinion. So what I would like to really raise here is the concern the petitioner raised with regard to the location of the car park and not it not being adequate to serve the future occupants of the property. And is it possible for us to add an additional refusal reason for, for the car park uh, side of it? Okay. Okay. Rose? Yeah, I'll just come in on that question then. So um, just to point out, I suppose, the location of the car park at the rear is very similar to the two previous schemes that we've refused. So in coming to the refusals previously, we did consider that the location itself was acceptable. Um, so I would advise against introducing a new concern in relation to that. Um, turning to the matter of parking, again, we have considered this in the previous schemes. Um, I've got Alan here who might want to come in on parking, but essentially um, the level of parking um, is sufficient when, when considered against the policy and there wouldn't be grounds um, to support a refusal reason on that. Councillor Tribunal, Councillor, sorry, Alan, would you like to add anything to that? Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, the development would provide 13 car parking spaces, 12 at the rear and one disabled car parking space at the front. Now, the London plan would allow a maximum of 13.5, round that up you might say 14. So uh, the development is in accordance with the London plan and very close to the maximum that would be allowed. Thank you, Thank very you much. Chairman. Councillor Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I would like to continue and say wrong development, wrong area. I agree with the officer's recommendation for refusal, and I would like to propose it. Okay. Thank you very much. Councillor Singh. Uh, thank you, Chairman and, uh, and officers. Uh, I think so many issues uh, out of character uh, and loss of privacy. So I strongly on the second uh, uh, proposed officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Singh. Is anybody else got any questions yet? Councillor Tuckwell. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman, and thank you to petitioners for taking us through through your thoughts this evening. Um, yeah, um, didn't like this one before, don't like it now. Um, I'm really surprised it's here, actually, to, to be honest. Um, but, but it is, and we've got it in front of us, and we'll, we'll, we'll give it a fair hearing as, as we have. Just wanted to pick up with, I guess it'll be Alan, actually, um, the highway's impact. So we've heard about parking, we've heard about the position of the car park, but given that we have got 13, 14 additional parking spaces, and we all know Harefield Road is a tricky little road to, to, to drive down on occasions, you know, what's the sort of sense of the sort of the, the impact on the highway and particularly the access point, which I think the, the petitioner picked up? Um, because if there is if there is real serious concerns there, is it something that could be turned into an additional refusal reason? I'm conscious that we have been moved and seconded, but I thought I'd just make that point. No, it's not. I haven't asked for the vote yet, so they've yep. plenty of time. Don't worry. Yeah. Alan. Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, now, the point of, of access, there's an existing vehicle crossover. Um, I can't tell if it's ever been used, but the access and sight lines are protected by double yellow lines. With regards to the trip generation, uh, 13 cars parking spaces, uh, if they're all to be occupied, I would estimate that that would put about five vehicles on the network in the AM peak when the uh, roads are the busiest. And then you would probably say, well, five cars, that's 
within the fluctuations of a daily flow. So uh, I, I do understand the reason for the question, but um, there's no highway concerns with regards to the amount of trips the development would put on the network. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Alan. Okay. Is that OK, Councillor Gohill? Councillor Gohill, you wish to make comments? Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so my question is regarding uh, fire access to the um, fire safety access to the building, should it, should, um, and whether whether the lack of um, fire services being able to access it be another reason for refusal. Again, um, I understand it's another highways question. Um. Do you, Alan, do you want to take that, or Ross, do you want to take? I think we did cover it in the report. I'm just having a quick look. Okay, if you bear with us. Yeah. Can I say something in the meantime? Just that this, the, well, yeah, uh, just just that on top of the on top of the exceptional bulk and over and overbearing overbearingness of this building, I just think I, I'm really disappointed that the um, applicant or the agent weren't here today, so we could have asked them directly, um, uh, asked them directly questions relating to this. Um, it seems like they're trying to get away with this again and again and it's come before us before and it's quite disappointing that they did that they didn't listen to the comments and the recommendations that the committee made the last time um and they seem to just be putting something that's almost almost identical back to us um and it's just inc incredibly disappointing uh you know to have to have a flat where if you're looking out your window all you're going to see is a wall is not something that's acceptable for for people actual actual people to live in and and you know our, our motto in this council, as the as the petitioner rightly said, is to put residents first. And by actually, by if we did consider approving this, and I'm glad that I'm glad that so far it seems that we're not. Um, it, we wouldn't have been putting our residents first because no one should have to live in in no one should have to live in in situations like that, and we shouldn't be enabling it. So I'm, I'm glad that this is going in that direction. But I I think Ross has an answer to my previous question. Yes, so. we do. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, so I've just found um, the paragraph that I um, had in my mind. So page 78 in the highway comments, um, the highway officer that advised us to consider the issue of fire safety and access by uh, a fire, fire engine. Um, so essentially, without reading it out, um, there are options. So if it can't sort of fully access the building, an alternative would be to install sprinklers. So essentially what I'm saying is that it could be addressed one way or another. Um, if we were looking to approve the application, I would probably suggest that we add um, a fire safety condition asking for details to be submitted of, you know, all things related to that. Thank you. Okay, so I'm proposed and seconded. Anybody else want to say anything? No? Okay, can I have a show of hands, those in favour of the officer's recommendation? That's unanimous, that's been refused. Thank you very much. Have a safe journey home. Okay, so now we go to applications without petition. And as there is a swift change of seats, back to back to it was when we started. Uh, Kate, I believe, obviously, I can now know who's going to take it. So we'll try and get a computer next time with a longer lead for you. But anyway, there you go. Number 10, 53 to 55, the Broadway Gold Street. Great, thank you, Chairman. So the final item on tonight's agenda is an application to um, convert a undercroft into a three-bed um, a three-bed flat. So officers are recommending approval. So I just go through the plans. The site is in Joel Street, Northwood. So the current building has recently been constructed. It's a three-storey building that provides for seven flats. It's next to the railway here, you can see. Okay, so this is the existing ground floor. So as you can see, it currently has undercroft parking, both three car parking spaces and some cycle parking and it's proposed to convert the ground floor into this flat here. So the flat would have um, private amenity space here. It is a shortfall um, from the requirements of the local plan. It comes in at 19 square metres, but there is, this is two reasons. There's one, that there is 
a communal garden space on the rooftop as well, and it's also a town centre location with access to um, nearby parks. Okay, so this is the other external alteration, well this is the main external alteration so that would change. So there you can see the Undercroft, um, the Undercroft garage here, and this will be replaced with the windows. Okay, so if I just flick through to the site so you can see what it looks like currently. So this is a serpentine court, so um, the truck here is parked in front of what it would be the undercroft, so this is the part that wants to be that they're proposing to convert into a flat. Um, it's just next the building next door. Um, longer views of the of the building and some more sites there. Okay, so um, I'd just like to draw members' attention to, actually not take their attention away from the briefing notes. So we did issue a addendum report um, advising that we were no longer seeking par um, parking permit restrictions. Um, there was some confusion over where um, the, con the controlled parking zone was. This is eligible, so we are reverting back to the recommendation in the officer's report to secure Section 106 for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kate. That's, that's great. I'm to, um, to open it to the floor. Councillor Hill? Councillor Hill? Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think it's. I, I think the um, ap the proposed application that the um, that they put forward for this uh, is quite well made, um, given that given its purpose that it was um, given its purpose. I think you know it's part of putting our residents first. I think we have to include, we have to really include and cater to all residents and I like that they had an accompanying um, disabled parking bay along with the along with the residential unit. Um, I would like to go ahead and propose that we support officers' recommendation on this. Thank I, you thank very you. much. Uh, Councillor Singer, Councillor Sensibori, would, would you like to fight it out amongst yourself? <laughs> or with, are you, Councillor Singh. Uh, thank you, Chair and officers. I think I uh, agree with the goal. Uh, this is benefit for the residents, actually. So I'm the second for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Fantastic. Councillor Sainsbury, do you...? Yeah, the application is very clear, and officer report is very uh, clear on uh, every issue. So I agree with officer okay. recommendations. No other speakers? So I'd like to put that to the vote. Can the committee thing? All those in favour with officer recommendation? That's agreed unanimously. Thank you very much. I just thank you very much for tonight and coming out and for those watching. Um, feedback would be appreciated before I close the meeting on these lovely TVs. As, as you're sitting on that side, and I can't really see, I've got it here, so it doesn't really matter. But yes, Councillor Gohill. Okay. Um, and when they're side by side, it's quite difficult to um, maybe because we're maybe we're too much for the so it's quite difficult to understand that. Other than that, the, the good news is the pictures are so much clearer. You can think of the things that they couldn't before. Um, and yeah, that's my opinion. Thank you. Comment on this slide. Thank you, Councillor. Um, thank you, Jeff. I think much, much better than quality brilliant. Brilliant. But, and you see, we got the we got the nice sign say end. So, <laughs> on that note, on that note, I'll off. yeah, we will do it one stage. <laughs> Councillor Chubidoff. It's just I think we need to try to think if we could adjust the location so that we could have more or less the same view because the distance I've got to the uh, screen and the distance my colleagues over there have, they is okay. quite a I'll get, you, I'll get you a special one just for the end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. On that on that note, I'm going to ask us to stop the feed. And um, thank you very much, everybody. Officers as well. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you.